You sure there ain't nobody in there? It's not. What the crap was that? Okay, let, let's go. What's up, Exeters? Tonight's a special night. This exit is a special exit. Why might you be asking? Because tonight, we've exited off Estes Park, Colorado. Why is that so special? Well, if you don't know, that's where the freaking Stanley Hotel is. And if you don't know what the Stanley Hotel is, you've been living under a rock. Because it's where Stephen King stayed when he got the inspiration for the book, The Shining. It's what The Shining is based off of. Now, this hotel is not what the hotel looks like in the original or movie. In the movie. In the original movie. The original hotel was actually based off of a, at one in Oregon. Yeah. Not this one. But. Like the look of it. This hotel is in the movie Dumb and Dumber. The, the Stanley Hotel is actually in the TV series they made of The Shining. Um, so they actually did use it in the TV series. So so we're here for what? The Nighttime Ghost Tour. That's right, Nighttime Ghost Tour. I ain't going to be freaking out on this one, though. It's going to be good. <laughs> All right, so I don't know if we can film the thing or not. Mike can only get some pictures, so either way, it's going to be a good experience. We'll fill you guys in on it when we get there. Join us on this adventure. So unfortunately, because we are not staying tonight here, we are not allowed on the upper level. That is for guests only, but the fourth floor seems to have the most activity. Outside of the concert hall because they say they can hear children running up and down the hallways and when they open the doors, nobody is there.
Okay, so in this room, they hold seances in, and it has been known that Mr. Stanley's wife was all into that, and they believe that maybe that's one reason why this hotel is haunted. And they also have Stephen King to thank for that, because after the movie came out and it became so popular, they now are pretty sure that at least every room in this hotel has had a Ouija board in it. People in their dumb Ouija boards. So this was also the only room that Mr. Stanley allowed smoking in because he suffered from tuberculosis. They actually moved up here to Estes Park after his third bout with tuberculosis. So to keep from having spells, dealing with that, this was the only room that you could actually smoke in, which is attached to the billiards room over here, right there. They're currently redoing it, but that's where he loved to shoot pool. They say you can see him and his wife in the mirror sometimes when you take pictures. So we are in the famous Stanley Hotel bar. Gonna try out some signature cocktails. The bar that Stephen King got drunk in and got his inspiration, I guess. Yeah, so back in, I think it was 1974, right? Is that what he told us? Yeah. Stephen King was having major writer's block. And so him and his wife were like, hey, let's take a road trip. And so a snowstorm started coming through and they were desperately looking for a hotel to stay at. And everyone they passed along the route was already closed for the winter until they seen the lights on here at the Stanley Hotel. So they pulled in and the bartender came to the door, whose name is Lloyd like in the movie. Lloyd Grady. And Stephen King said, hey, can I have a room here? So they hooked him up with the presidential suite, which was room 217 here, which is different from the movie 237. But they changed it in the movie because they thought it would become a dead room to the hotel. Like basically nobody would want to stay in that room. And they were dead major wrong. wrong. They were because dead wrong. that room is now booked up on Halloween for the next eight years. And what you say, the rooms in general are booked up. A year in advance. That room, that room is booked up a year in advance and eight years in advance just for the night of Halloween. So Stephen King's wife got a migraine, went to bed early. He decided to come to this bar and get a drink. Slid some money across the counter, to which the bartender said, your money is no good here. And thus, The Shining and Lloyd the bartender were born. And then the bartender started telling him all the stories about the ghosts that were here at the hotel, which excited him even more. He got drunk and went and laid down in bed. Okay, before we get to these cocktails, uh, let's talk about Lloyd the bartender again. Um, so the real bartender's name was Lloyd Grady. So as you know in the movie, the bartender's name is Lloyd and the groundskeeper's name is Grady. And the actual bartender here, Lloyd Grady, that Stephen King slid the money across to, um, his job was actually bartender and groundskeeper. So. So Stephen King, the wife, the bartender, and a couple of maids were all that were here that night. So basically, he got drunk, went and laid down, had a terrifying dream of his son being chased by a water hose and swallowed and eaten after its mouth, like, turned into teeth and ate the kid whole. Woke up, went and smoked a cigarette, and basically had the beginning, the middle, and the end of The Shining by the time he finished the cigarette. So. All right, so I got the Red Rum Punch. It's Stanley's own blend of rum, exotic liquors, and tropical juices. Cheers. Renee got Lucky Lucy. It is Basil Hayden's Bourbon. 
uh, Bell de Brit Pear Cognac, Lemon and Grapefruit Juice, and Agave. All right. That's good. I got the water. <laughs> AJ and Kira had water. So, Pretty when tasty. you come and do the ghost tour at night, you are not allowed to record. You can take pictures, they give you opportunity to take pictures. But you just can't have any audio or video recording on it um, because he said if it shows up on YouTube, he'll basically lose his job. Yeah, because the stories that he tells and everything are actually property of Stanley Hotel. So, okay. so some of the places that we went into, um, we can't get, couldn't get video of, but like the room that we showed you earlier where the seances were, you know, performed, that's in this main lobby and we can just go to the rope and stand there with the camera and video it. But that was not the most haunted room here on the property. That belongs to the concert hall, but we will, when we walk outside, we'll go over there to it, but we can't go into it because, um... I saw he had to use a key card to get in. Which, undoubtedly, if you work here, you kind of lose the look of the draw if you're the one that has to go and turn the lights off out there. Because <laughs> he said it's pretty creepy. Like, he had the light, he turned the lights off on us. Because um, not only do you have to turn them off upstairs where the actual stage and everything is, but you also have to go downstairs through this long, creepy hallway of this basement area and turn those lights off. And that's where one particular ghost named Lucy, a little girl, somewhere between the age of 10 and 15, that's where she likes to hang out along with uh, a couple other ones that they've gotten pictures of. And our guide, one of the ghosts don't particularly like him. He got chased off by him one night, so. Sorry, dude. Bad look of a draw. And what's really cool to me is, like, on the tour, they, like, they'll turn the lights off. And in the room where Lucy died, he, like, whipped out a spirit box. I was not expecting that. Yeah, I wasn't either. I would. And, like, he said lots of times, like, they'll get, they'll be real active, wanting to talk. And everything and they've seen while you're in there you know you're taking flash pictures in the dark and they've seen faces in the bathroom in the room there's like a little door that goes back 20 feet behind the wall and that's where into like a dirt bed that there's no other way to get in there that's where she would hide uh, from the groundskeeper whenever she would hear him come in and then come back out into her room to get warm is that undoubtedly she either fell asleep or just didn't hear the groundskeeper one night. But he found her and drug her outside into a blizzard, threw her outside, and she died of the cold. So she still hunts that area. But they've seen, like, hand reaching out of that closet where she used to hide and stuff talking. So we heard a few things. One thing he asked was, like, how many spirits are in this room with us right now, and you could audibly hear them say seven. So. Your boy didn't get scared, though. I held it together like a rock, I'm just saying. I mean, I, during, while he was doing the spirit box thing, I was, like, trying to, like, take pictures, you know, because the lights were off, and I was just like, Choo -choo. and I didn't realize that it had got <laughs> turned around on me. So when like I looked at the picture, it was just we'll put the picture in the video. It's awful. It's like two of them like up close where I'm like <laughs> looking like she's trying to do the Blair Witch Project. I know, like like Kira was like sitting in the chair with me and she was <laughs> looking at the picture and uh, we just could not keep from laughing. I mean I didn't mean to do it, but it was just like <laughs> I was not expecting that picture and it was so fun. <laughs> So Nabley room, also room 401, is extremely haunted by a guy named Pierre. 
He's kind of like a woman. No, that was not. I thought Mare was the one in the uh, underground. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. Lord My bad. something, which they think he might be. It might be Jack the Ripper. Yeah. He's a womanizer and he loves blondes apparently. Yeah, it said that room 401 used to be the honeymoon suite. It's also where one of the guys from Ghost Hunters or something stayed and had his glass on his nightstand broken. Um, they've had, you what know. What was his name? Lord something. Do y'all remember the name? Lord what? That, that ain't that. <laughs> anyway, uh, they've gone up That's to the room. That's freaking Shrek. <laughs> they've gone up to the room and... Uh, you know, knocked on the door, and they've heard somebody, you know, opened up, and they've heard a voice say, come in, ladies. Um, you know, they've had uh, other times, you know, somebody yell, get out. Um, so that, that room's pretty haunted. The basement was with Pierre, who was... A the, baker. A or baker. Something. So you, they've smelled, you know apple pies and baked goods down there and the tour guide shows you pictures from like some of the guests that have t done the tours and they'll they give him pictures that they have taken and one of them looked like Schmeagol from Lord of the Rings and they were like he was like I wonder if this is Pierre yeah I mean it's like Cause he said that he'll grab on your legs and your butt and your butt sometimes like you're a female yeah, the, I mean, Tug you can see hair. it. Like, it's like a full-blown, like, somebody sitting up on the rocks type thing. Like, you can full-on everything. So. so that's just a couple of stories that we got told that I can remember off the top of my head. So, uh, so we're going to finish, finish our drinks and go show you guys outside. All right, so this is the <clears throat> concert hall. Concert hall. This is supposed to be pretty. This is the most haunted area, according to the tour guide on the property. This is where Lucy is in the bottom of in the basement. This is where the entity is that they are not sure of his name completely, but they have two different names for him that chased him through the dark hall. And this is where people often get shadow figures in their pictures. But like I said, we can't get into it because you have to have a key. You can't see nothing in there. It's too freaking dark. And that's it. Look how pretty this property is though. Really scared I'm gonna get karate chopped by like a deer because we saw so many out here. Yeah, like, just, it just comes flying over a bush and karate chops me. Yeah, they're just out eating grass while we walking by. It is a pretty hotel. So over there is the main part. And then this area is almost fell off the curb. <laughs> I'm guessing just a extra part, an extra area. I guess people can stay or maybe they hold special events or something. Not real sure. It's that green blinking over there. Where? One of those windows down there. That's it. Hand sanitizer thing. Yeah. I saw cool. it earlier. All, All right, right, guys. That does it for us at the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park. Next time we come here, we're definitely going to have to have reservations to stay the night. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> she pushed an envelope really hard right now. <laughs> but definitely, if you are in the area, do the tour. It is well worth it. 
I mean, it is better than the Winchester house that we've done. It's better than the Alcatraz tour, which Alcatraz, if you like history, you're going to love that Yeah, that was a good tour. for. It's not just like the haunted side of it. It's for history people, too. So if you're either one of those, then you'll enjoy that one. And we will link both of those videos in this if you haven't seen those already. But this hotel, I can't believe we're here. Yeah. This is like a major check off the bucket list. I can't tell you how many times I've Googled coming here and been like, what's the drive from Alabama to <laughs> Colorado? Oh, yeah, that's way too far. And I cannot believe I sat at the bar and had a drink the and bar. got to tour the property. It's the only thing left to do is actually stay in a room overnight. Yep, the bar where Stephen King had his drink, came up with Lloyd and Grady. That's so. awesome. Big, big check off the bucket list. <laughs> so it is freezing right now. So we're about to go get in the car and head out. Yep. It's been real, Stanley Hotel. Been real fun too. So, so if you've liked this video, give us a big thumbs up, hit that bell so you know that we put out new videos and subscribe. Yep. And we'll catch you guys down the road at the next exit. Later. You sure there ain't nobody in there? It's not. The, what the crap was that? Okay, let, let's go. Tell me what that let's was go. the end. What was that? No. Watch that one over Yo, that was a straight white. There it goes again. Oh, I don't feel good. Please, can we can go? Can we go? Mama, this isn't funny anymore. Dad, you got me, my stomach hurt. I'm gonna have diarrhea.